month. This is our final act. Alright, so um, this is just like a quick review of our pitch, which you guys probably remember because they messed it up. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, like I was saying, the purpose or goal, or goal of this project um, was to kind of take it a step further from a lot of uh, previously existing apps like Around Me. Um, and what Around Me does is it tells you where's the nearest Starbucks or where's the nearest McDonald's or any service. Um, but we took it a step further and tried to um, calculate how long do you actually wait in line until that service is performed for you. And therefore, you can calculate how long. So if, for example, if it took like five minutes to get somewhere and then you waited there for 15 minutes, it would be 20 minutes till the, serv uh, till the service is performed. Well said. So now we're basically just going to show you how it works. Well, how it's made. Yeah. yeah. Next slide is how it works. Um, uh, there's there's like a lot of information. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have our time right now. Put your phone here. Can close. We have two of them. Sorry. So we have our time right now, which your phone will calculate. Uh, we have to simulate so, it yeah. for our purposes. So. I'm going to update it. And if you update it, um, it's a noun option. So update it to the nearest second. Um, we have our day of the week. Today is Wednesday. And it, the reason it doesn't say Wednesday is because the computer, the language is that like 1 equals Sunday, 2 equals Monday. So therefore, 4 equals Wednesday. So we have 4, which uh, we'll get to all the functions we use later. And actually, the cool thing is that tomorrow, if you open this app, it'll say 5, which is the cool thing. It changes. And um, next, it's our time to get to the nearest Starbucks, which... Um, GPS. Yeah, your phone would have a GPS, and it would be able to calculate so we're that. just assuming like the village of Pittsburgh, the Starbucks is about 15 minutes away, so we use that one. Yeah, and then... This is where all the hard work takes place. The average waiting time. Charlie, would you like to explain that formula to the class? <laughs> I can't really read it More that much. It's, it's, it's an if statement. It's called an if statement. It's it basically gives you a scenario, and you have to program the computer Ooh, I to say the same. Tim, can you please so explain it? So basically, saying like it's sort of um, what you would use um, for a piecewise function on a graph. It's sort of what you'd use to program a piecewise function. A piecewise function. Um, in case you don't know what it means, it's basically like um, a graph. It's not a linear graph. It's sort of um, it's a graph that goes up and then stays the same and then goes down or something like that. Like it changes. It doesn't constantly go up or constantly go down. It's not. So, yeah. Right. So I'm basically just going to walk you guys through this. This. So we have if here, which recognizes the if statement, and then we have or, which gives two separate scenarios. Don't worry, we're not going to like. The entire yeah, and then we have like C3, which is your the cell for the day of the week. If it equals C9 or C15, so basically it's saying if it's, so a, if it's Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. so weekend. Don't worry. And then if if the hour of the time now is 10, so like in the hour of 10 a.m., you want the cell H28. Can you show that? Yeah, so. So H28 would be 4.4. Um, 4.4, .4. and that's the waiting time to tell you in a minute how we calculated that. But basically, you're telling the computer to, if it's 10 o'clock, um, then the computer's going to return this number. Um, and we're, we actually, we only did 10, 11, and 12 in the um, formula because we're presenting at, in, during the hour of 11 o'clock. So um, just for, the, for our purposes, we wanted to do 10, 11, and 12. If this were a real app, it would be, there would be an issue statement for all 17 hours that the store is open. And we have that right there. Yeah. Sorry. And then now we basically just have, we do it again for the hours of 11 and 12. Same thing. And, um, yeah, it just, but instead it's H29 and H30. And then over here, or where's the 12? Right there. And then we have a comma after the 12 that says comma zero, which is really important because you're basically telling the computer if it's not between the hours of 10 and 11 and 12, and you return, then you return zero, or otherwise it would be closed if we did all 17 hours. And zero doesn't mean you have a zero, zero to the waiting time, it means closed. So, yeah. And then we do the, and then we have a new if statement, it's like a nested if statement, and if statement within. within. Yeah. And then now, you don't have to do the or, because now it recognizes that it's not a weekend, so it's a weekday now. And then we basically just do the same things, but with different cell numbers. 
because the weekday data for um, yeah, and the weekday the data. The reason the, the reason we're using the if statement in the first place is that the coffee consumption. Uh, we're doing this for coffee like Starbucks. So the um, coffee consumption varies on a weekday versus a weekend, or versus like 6 a.m. when everybody's going to work versus like 9 p.m. when nobody wants to buy coffee. So yeah. So now you might ask, uh, how did we get this average waiting time? How did we? And this is in minutes, by the way. But um, how did we get this average waiting time? So there's a. Do you have a question, Charlie? Is it Google? No, Google. It is not. No, it is not Google. We came up with the formula ourselves. Do you want me to write it down? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say something first. Um, okay. So before, we wanted to come up with waiting time, and we this we looked on Google, and Charlie, we looked on Google, and it was a really complex statistical model, and when our, par when our parents looked at it, they were like, this is a bit beyond your mathematical capabilities, so you might want to, like, choose something a little bit more simple. So what we did is we came up with a more simple, intuitive model that we ourselves came up with. And uh, I will explain it in a second, but the formula is n times s over b plus s. So um, I'll tell you what all those letters mean in a sec, so, uh, or right now. So um, basically, n is the number of people in line at any given time. Um, and, we, and for that, we made a graph, like a minute by minute graph, how many people are coming in per minute during a given hour. Um, so that's the um, number of people in line. S is always four, because we're assuming that it takes, a, S is the serving time, how long it takes to serve a person. So we're going to assume for our purposes that it takes four minutes for a person to be served. It's just um, the average. Yeah. And then, so you're multiplying the number of people in line by um, the time it gets to serve one, takes to serve one person. Then here's another factor that we haven't talked about yet, but we did consider it. The B stands for the number of employees, or baristas, that's what they call um, employees at Starbucks. you got to divide it because the number of um, baristas is very important because if there's very little, then it's going to be a longer waiting time and um, vice versa. So, um, And then the reason you have to do plus S again is because even if um, there's no one in line, you still have to get served, so that's another four minutes. So no matter, so at any time in the day, you're going to have at least a four-minute waiting time. So basically, like, this part is other people, and then this part's you. So, um, uh, are you guys, do you guys have any questions at this point, or Grace? How do you find the number of people? Is it, like, a different Okay, yeah, of we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, so. I think that's going to be the next slide, but, we, yeah, we'll definitely tell you that. Actually, I think that's right now, but, so, um, yeah, and then this is just plugged in with this formula, um, and we're not going to explain that, but that's basically just this. Um, and then Excel is smart enough to, like, if you drag it down, it'll um, drag yeah. the formula down and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything you want to add, Nick? No, I think you're good. Do you want to, you want to add the graphs? Um, Some of the graphs? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so um, when, so when we calculated the w for the waiting times, or like, oh, you asked number of people in line, right? So, this, one. this is like, well... There's one right there. But this yeah. is the one that you're asking. Okay. Um, so this is basically minute by minute. It's how many people are in the store. This like, is hour. I think I made quite a bit of a mistake. Oh, okay. Save that title. My bad. Please. Okay, so that's hour. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, so it j basically says how many people are there per hour. And we found that out. Yeah, we talked. We talked. actually went to Starbucks one day and talked to a barista there. Um, like, um, and we asked her, like, how many people are typically um, come in at this hour and uh, what's the profile like of the coffee purchase as a function of time. And she, and the person gave us some good, like she told us how many transactions on a typical weekday. And then using that information, we were able to create a, kind of like a profile. And then we knew that like, that's like, what is it, 60% during the breakfast hours? Yeah, 60% hours, yeah. Uh, like off coffee is considered during breakfast hours and that kind of stuff. Right there. So, because yeah. we, we didn't want to get all of our data off the internet. We did to some extent, but we didn't want to like get it all off the internet. So we actually went out and talked to a real life person about that. Did you, that. Yeah, did you make a graph? Isn't it going to be more on the weekends and weekdays? Like, did you make actually, a graph? Actually, there's, no, there's more on the weekdays, there's, actually. The, we but, have but, two but separate graphs. There's not, but. It's not that much, but there's, I think, it's like uh, 50 if, I, more. if I remember correctly, there were 703 people. transactions on a Monday. And then the other one was like 600, 687 or something on a weekend. It's, it's mainly because so many people 
most people um, going to work going to work on that weekdays. Yeah. So in the early morning, there's a big coffee rush. So did you average them, or did you make two graphs and you're just not showing? Them? We made two graphs, and um, we're, no, the, well, this is the weekend one. I think uh, this is the weekday one. It's we just changed sort of similar. Well, we just changed a yeah. little bit. So um, you want to go on to the next slide? Yeah. 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 What? Yeah, I know. All right, so um, now we're just gonna. Can you just open the blank yeah, Excel sure. document? So now um, you guys, uh, we're just gonna use like a quick. We're just gonna do like a quick uh, overview of um, some of the basic Excel functions that there are. You guys probably know some of them, so we're just gonna go through them real quick. So we're gonna start with the really basic thing that if you type in equals, that's telling Excel that it's a, that it's a formula. Um, and then addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, just the basic things. Addition. Uh, uh, do you have a question? Or you just no. Okay, so um, um, addition is like uh, you could just do four plus five, if you, if you, but you can't just do four plus five. You do equals four plus five. You click enter, you get nine, hopefully, and then um, <laughs> yeah, if if your calculator is in sync. Um, but um, and then like you could also do the same thing with letter with a cell name. So if you want to add the data in a one plus a two or something like that. Uh, sum is different. Sum is this, actually it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, thanks wait, for. Well, if you want to do more. Yeah. If, if you want to do more, if you if, if you want to do like more cells, then you do that. So if you want to do sum of like a one and a two, you get eighteen. Sorry. Once again, hopefully you get eighteen. A one and a two, you get eight, eighteen. Yeah. So um, and then actually, believe it or not, Excel does not have a subtraction. Do you want to zoom in on that? I already have. So Excel does not have a subtraction function. Yes. It does not. It does not have a subtraction function. Yes, can you add negatives? What is it? You subtract. No, no, I know. We're not talking about like an actual like function for like. We're talking about like. So you know you can go like. We know you can use like the dash thing. But, like, yeah. So um, if you want to use the actual function, you just have to do add an add a negative number. So like if you want to do eight minus six, you do eight plus negative six. Um, so now uh, multiplication is just you could do equals four times five, or if you want to do the, the hard way, yeah, four and then the asterisk five. And if you wanted to do the hard way, you could do equals the product of four comma five, and it's the exactly the same thing. Um, division. And then division, lastly, is just, okay, I think I did okay on time. Uh, division is, uh, actually there's, um, if you do the quotient thing, for, can you do something for me, Nick? Do yeah. quotient of four and five, and let's see what we get. You get zero. Um, so four divided by five is obviously not zero. So what, if you want to, uh, well, if your calculator isn't in sync, then definitely is zero. But um, if you want to, if you want to get like an uh, like the accurate, it, it returns the whole. Number. Yeah, it only it returns the integer portion. So what you have to do is do equals four slash five, and you'd get 0.8 as your answer. So that's a much more accurate um, answer. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Now, Nick, you want to just do like a quick thing of the that, that, that those are really really basic things where he's gonna just show you yeah. some of the more complicated ones. And then just for the what just happened, I'll try to make it a little bit. Just for this, I'll do that. Okay, so even though your phone would do all of this, like the time right now and the day of the week, it wouldn't. It has software in your phone, and the software would kind of, it would actually look like this, and it would have these functions in it. And Excel has a function called the now function. So it just returns like the time to the nearest second, or minute, or hour. How, however you want to program it. Yeah. And then we use the weekday of today for this. These, uh, the weekday, it, well, the today function, it returns the date of today, and then the weekday returns the number using the date, which yeah. explains all the parentheses in there. And then I think, I think that's it. Actually. Yeah. All right. Use, yeah. And then just making the. Did it just die? No. Okay. Sorry. All right. So and then basically just for the graphs, you just have to make a table. Do we need to show them? Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, you, you just need to make a table and then like select. You, like, highlight the data and do like insert and then whatever kind of graph. Oh, sorry. Like, sorry. 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 I don't know if sorry. you guys that's did, true. but we did. Guys, guys. Okay. All right. Um, so we did that. Yeah. I got it. All right. So um, we both got a lot out of this experience. Um, we learned uh, a lot about programming, Excel programming, um, and language that a computer understands. And it was also good to get an experience of like going out and 
doing some field research and talking to like a real live person. That's that was some good experience. And uh, anything you want to add, Nick? No, I think you got it. All right. So um, next slide. So uh, we wish we got it by um, magic. But yeah, it would have been way easier. But um, so we. So we did use the internet for a little, just like you said, but not not all of it, certainly not. We we used a couple of articles on HuffingtonPost.com. It was basically just articles they interviewed a barista, and they found out like the total number of Starbucks in America, and it was how we got some of our transactions data, right? And then um, kudos to both of our uh, parents who helped us, uh, like, Nick's dad um, helped us with the life statement and all that, and my dad also helped us get a jump start in the beginning with the formula. So, because um, I tried to do the life statement by myself, but then I realized that it was a little bit, some of the a little bit confusing with all the parentheses and stuff. So, I think there's one more slide, maybe. Yeah. You guys have any questions? Okay, I spent a lot of time making Cindy, that. Who cares? Nick <laughs> called it a sideways briefcase, but I hope you realize that's a coffee mug. So, um, oh, 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 Okay, so on the Excel slide when it said like the days of the week and then it said the time. So you said when it was cool how when you like exit it and when you open it again it would change the day of the week. Yeah, yeah. Right. Did it also change the time? Yes. yes. Well um yeah well, it changes the time but you might sort of probably have you might have to refresh yeah. it. So um, yeah, you just have to yeah, yeah. Jeremy? So you know how you went to Starbucks, right? Yeah. Did you get anything? We got food when we, we got stuff when we went there. Yeah, it was a nice excuse. Yeah, you know, it was nice. It was a nice excuse to get like a marshmallow yes, to take a dream energy. bar. <laughs> so, any other questions, anybody? Oh. Did you calculate like all the little factors and like? Well, the, like some little factors, like the number of Starbucks open 24 hours. There's like 12,000 Starbucks in America, and there's like 36. 36 open. open 24 hours. So we did consider that, but we didn't actually use it in our calculations. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. Do you have any plans to take this app to market? Uh, we well, don't have mm, like a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So um, since these, the, this is linked to some pretty big companies like Starbucks and maybe Google. Google for like the navigation. It might be unless we had a million bucks somehow. Uh, it would be a little tough to do that. Um, so yeah. We're running. Uh, hi, I'll come back. Do you know how? Cake starter. Kickstarter. Well, like, no, you need to be a team. team. What? I know, we tried. We tried it. Get your parents to Kickstarter. Okay, yeah. um. Did you know that Shutterfly <laughs> is handing out like $500,000? I think we're getting a little off the topic. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, anybody else? Um, yeah. I was going to say, you can probably, because you're students, you could probably apply for some sort of grant. There's mm -hmm. probably something. Yes. And those are should be a lot of money. Oh, what? Tell us. What? <laughs> what? Oh my god. Yeah, I love her. Alright. Yeah, and she's gonna invite you to her show. Thank you. And oh, she's yeah. gonna be like, oh, guess you can, what? You can, We're gonna give